Hello, I'm Matthew Trick, the Vicar of Ringwood, and I'm here with my wife, Sarah. Hello. And we'd love to welcome you to the Vicarage Garden again. It's a joy to be leading worship here in such glorious weather. We'd love to welcome you, whether you're a regular member of one of our churches, or whether you're just tuning in for the first time and just checking us out, you're warmly welcome to be here this morning. In fact, if you're joining us for the first time, we'd like you to do three things. We'd love you to like our Facebook page. We'd love you to connect with us via our online connect card, which you'll find in the comments section below. And we'd like you to consider becoming part of our Ringwood Benefits Facebook group, where we're trying to build an online community. So do join in with those three things. We'd love you to be a part of them. We're still in the Sundays after Easter where we celebrate as Christians the triumph of Jesus on the cross over sin and death. So let's pause and pray together. Risen Christ, you fill the disciples with boldness and fresh hope. Strengthen us to proclaim your risen life and fill us with your peace. To the glory of God the Father, Amen. Amen. Today we're starting a new teaching series on the I Am sayings from John's Gospel and Ian's going to kick off uh, that series shortly during this celebration. But for now, we're going to sing together from wherever you are. We're going to sing the song, O oh, Praise the Name of the Lord Our God.
what a wonderful song of praise. We're going to hear now from John's Gospel and Heather's going to read to us. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St John. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus learnt that the Pharisees had heard Jesus is making and baptising more disciples than John, although it was not Jesus himself but his disciples who baptised, he left Judea and started back to Galilee. But he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sichar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by his journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water, and Jesus said to her, Give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, How is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus asked her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is that is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you have no bucket, and the well is deep. Where do you get that living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob, who gave us the well, and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I will give them will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you have now is not your husband. What you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now we're going to hear from Ian, who's going to launch our series on the I Am sayings from John's Gospel. Thank you, Ian. Well, as any gardener would tell you, of course, water is an essential part of growing anything. The fact is, though, of course, no life would uh, exist without life. Those birds who are singing very loudly at the moment uh, wouldn't exist if there wasn't uh, water. We couldn't exist without water. Water is the essential ingredient for life here uh, on planet Earth. Now, in our Bible reading today, we have that story of when Jesus meets that woman at the well. It's interesting to know at the beginning of this talk uh, that this woman meets with Jesus at midday, which actually is not the normal thing uh, for people to do in those uh, days and in that part of the world to draw water at midday. Most times people would draw water early in the morning or in the evening. So it was unusual that this woman was here at that particular moment in time. But we have this famous story, don't we then, of Jesus uh, meeting uh, with this woman. And there are a few things to pay attention to about uh, this particular woman. 
She had been married five times. She was living with a man. She was a Samaritan. And strange enough for me to say this, but she was also a woman. We'll come to that in a moment. We'll unpack that in a moment. But also in this story, we have Jesus making three claims. The first one being that he is the living water uh, and that we are to worship God in spirit and in truth and that he at the end of the story makes a claim that he is actually the Messiah. So back to the woman. Let's just unpack that situation. Here is this woman meeting with Jesus and in our day and age you wouldn't find that very strange. But actually for a prophet or an important leader to meet with a woman on his own actually culturally was a no-no. And yet here is Jesus sitting with this woman at the well, engaging in conversation. But added to that, she's been married five times. And in that culture, that was seen as a terrible, terrible thing. She would have been classed as an outsider within her culture. Added to this, she was also living with a man she wasn't married, which again would have been uh, an awful thing in that particular culture. She was also a Samaritan. Now to understand that you have to understand the history uh, of the Samaritans and the Jewish people. Basically the Samaritans had created their own uh, rival temple uh, to rival that of Jerusalem and of course that had created all kinds of political tension and religious uh, tensions and to the point where the Samaritans hated the Jewish people and the Jewish people hated the Samaritans. To such the point that a Jewish person would never walk into a Samaritan area or territory. In fact, they would go all the way around a town just to avoid going into it. So it's interesting, isn't it, in this story that Jesus doesn't do that. He walks straight into Samaritan territory and sits at a Samaritan uh, well. And there he meets a Samaritan woman who the Jewish people would have classed as an enemy. So it's very intriguing what's going on here. Jesus again breaking all the, the norms of culture and society. And as I said, she was also a woman. Now what I mean by that is, don't worry, I've got nothing against women, women. But in this particular period of history and time, women were seen as no more important than making food, looking after children and going and getting uh, you know, water and stuff. But they had no right to education, they had no right to vote. They really were, well, they didn't have many more rights than slaves, really, in those days. And certainly, uh, uh, sort of a, a prophet shouldn't be seen to be talking uh, to a woman. So all these things culturally were going on in the background. And it's important for us to actually realise this. So here is Jesus meeting with someone he shouldn't meet. It tells me that Jesus doesn't care about all those kinds of things. What Jesus cares about is the person. He's more interested in our hearts than who we are, where we come from, what country, what colour our skin is. That doesn't matter to him. What really matters is our hearts. And as Jesus was, of course, talking uh, to this woman, he made some of the I am claims, which we'll be going to be unpacking over the next uh, few weeks as a sermon series. And in this particular passage, he makes the claim that he is the living water. It's interesting uh, that the phrase uh, living water was actually known to the Jewish uh, people back then or all peoples really because it referred to the well, the water in the well or like a stream. In other words water that you could use to drink uh, from. And so when Jesus uh, said uh, about living water she was thinking he was referring of course to the water in the well but he wasn't. He was referring to spiritual water. He was saying that if you drink of me, I am, in a sense, um, life. I bring spiritual life to you. If you believe and trust in me, you will gain everlasting life. This water will bring you life. Of course, he wasn't talking about physical drinking water. He was talking very much, of course, about spiritual water. So he's saying that I am the fountain of life. All you have to do is believe uh, and trust in me. He also uh, said that to worship God, you are to worship him in spirit and in truth. Which kind of is interesting really, because in Jesus' time, the place where you could only worship God was in the temple. But Jesus was saying, actually in effect, that you can worship God anywhere you like, so long as it's from the heart. 
what Jesus is really saying is it's your intentions that matter. It's not your location or where you are. What matters, again, is the heart. Why are you worshipping? In other words, you can worship God anywhere you like, so long as it comes from within and your intentions are right and proper because you really want to worship uh, God. Uh, right uh, at the end of the uh, story, uh, Jesus also uh, makes an incredible uh, claim. He actually makes the claim that he uh, is the Messiah. And you can uh, read that actually uh, in verse 26, where he actually makes the claim that he is the Messiah. Because what happens is, uh, after this woman's been listening to Jesus, she starts asking, uh, you know, uh, questions. But she also refers, of course, uh, to the Messiah and she says well when the Messiah comes uh, he will actually be able to explain all these things to us and it will all make uh, complete uh, sense and then Jesus says well actually I am he I am the Messiah uh, the chosen one which must have made that woman sit there and go what I'm actually talking to the Messiah so Jesus made three claims he claimed that he was the living water he claimed that we can worship God in spirit and in truth. We don't have to go to buildings. But he also claimed to be the Messiah. But not just the Messiah of the Jewish people, but for all peoples. Samaritans, Jews and Gentiles. Jesus is my Messiah. Jesus is my Saviour and yours. God wants us all, as it were, to drink from him. He wants us all to put our faith and trust in him and to come to him in spirit and truth when we worship. We don't have to worship God in big buildings, which at this period of time in history is quite important, isn't it? Because, of course, we're all being isolated and told that we cannot go out very often and we, of course, cannot come together collectively to worship God. And so actually to know that we don't have to go to buildings, or worship services or worship God should come as a great comfort to us all. So I want to encourage you during this lockdown to continue to pray, continue to worship God. And if you're longing in your heart for meaning and purpose, what is the meaning of life? You're looking for some kind of spiritual answers to life. Well, Jesus is clearly saying in this passage to this woman and to all of us that he is the water of life. And if we come to him in faith and trust, we can find hope, we can find purpose, we can find love, we can discover that there is a God that really does care about us and wants to have a real living relationship with us. And this kind of water that he offers won't ever run out, it'll go on for all eternity. And this is an incredible claim to make. Well, God bless you all and uh, have a great week. Amen. Sorrows let my God by his own betray the sin of man and brother God has been on Jesus
It is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. Now my debt is paid. It is paid in full by the precious blood that my Jesus spilled. Now the curse of sin has no hold on me. Whom the sun sets free. Thank you, Ian, so much for those thoughts on I am he from the I am sayings in John's Gospel. Well, we're going to turn to God in prayer now. If you've been sending in your prayer requests throughout the week, be assured that we've, we've got them and Matthew will be including those in our prayers together now. Thank you, Matthew. After each prayer this morning, I will say, Lord God, hear us. And I invite you to join in with the response if you're comfortable to do so. Help us to put our trust in you. Lord God, hear us. Help us to put our trust in you. Lord Jesus, we, may, we pray that we may be able to imitate the example you set in your encounter with the Samaritan woman. You did not allow prejudice of race or culture or religion or gender to keep you from sharing the good news with someone in need. In a similar way, we pray that we may put the needs of people we meet ahead of our own needs. You are the one who brings to us the gift of God, the gift of living water. By faith may we drink from the water that you have given us, and we pray that that water may become in us a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. We pray that you will enable us to share this living water with others as you shared it with this woman. May we embrace what you say in today's gospel, that God is spirit. We ask, Heavenly Father, that we may worship you in spirit and truth today and every day. Lord God, hear us. Help us to put our trust in you. We pray to the Lord that church leaders everywhere will walk with all who search for the living God, especially during these uncertain times, offering Christ's peace and reconciliation. We pray particularly for our bishops, Tim and Debbie, and for our vicars, Matthew and Ian. Lord God, hear us. Help us to put our trust in you. We pray to the Lord that those who lead the nations of the world will walk in the ways of justice and peace. May leaders everywhere be guided by your teachings and your example. Lord God, hear us. Help us to put our trust in you. 
We pray to the Lord for all those, especially the children, who are feeling scared or unsettled at this time. Bring them your peace and your comfort, that all may know that your love is with us always. Lord God, hear us. Help us to put our trust in you. We pray to the Lord for all those who are on the front lines of this pandemic, especially our healthcare workers and first responders, but also for all who are unable to stay at home, but must work to benefit us all. May God continue to protect them and keep them in good health. Lord God, hear us. Help us to put our trust in you. We pray to the Lord for our sick. May the risen Christ visit them with the healing power and new hope. We pray for Maria in Surrey and her entire family after the sad loss of her mum to COVID-19 last Sunday. And we pray particularly for Maria's dad who is in his 80s and struggling with his own health at this time. We pray also for Patricia Cliff who is fighting for her life in hospital. We ask especially for your healing power on these people and all those we bring before you now in the silence of our hearts. Lord God, help, hear, Lord God, hear us. Help us to put our trust in you. We pray to the Lord that those whose life's journey is nearing completion will soon behold God face to face. For all who have died, may they live forever with Christ in the glory of the resurrection. Lord God, hear us. Help us to put our trust in you. Lord, we lay before you now all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our troubles and worries, and those things we wish to give you thanks for, which we bring to you now in a moment of silence. Lord God, hear us. Help us to put our trust in you. Lord God, we give you thanks for all the blessings you shower on us along the way, for all the blessings of life and for your love and guidance which are with us always. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Matthew, for leading us in prayer. Now we're going to join together in that prayer that unites Christians around the world. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Well, we're now going to sing together our final hymn today, which is And Can It Be? Oh, 
celebration this Sunday now. Do come back next Sunday and join us for next week's Sunday Live as well. Just to remind you that the Connect cards through which you can keep in touch with us and we can keep you in touch with news activities and events that are happening, that Connect card link is in the comments section below. Do complete it uh, online when you get a few moments. We've got loads going on in the current week. So we've got 12 at 12 continuing where we commit to pray each weekday at 12 noon for the coronavirus pandemic and for all affected by it, especially those in our local communities. At two o'clock each day, Fought for the Day is released and we've got a range of contributors who are gonna share their reflections with us. So do check out Fought for the Day across our social media at two o'clock each, each weekday. We've also got lots of other content going out at the moment. We are putting out our peace videos, extending a message of peace during this time of uncertainty. What we'd also love to tell you about is our new mobile app, which you can download from any of the app stores onto your phone. And it will keep you up to date with podcasts. So we're putting out Fought for the Day as a podcast. So if you don't want to watch us, you can listen to us instead. Um, and also we're putting out all our videos into that same app as well as posting them on Facebook and YouTube. So that app is going to be really helpful to anyone who wants to follow and share in our life together. Do download it today. Also in that app, you have the option to give financially. We know that so many of you support us through offerings during services and that's become very difficult because those physical services are not happening. So if you're one of those people who normally puts cash in our offering plate, first of all, thank you. We really appreciate you giving generously towards our shared ministry. But also if you're a person who's been joining us online, either for Sunday Live or Fought for the Day or 12 at 12 or anything, if you felt you could give a gift financially, we'd be very grateful to you for that. And you can do that now through the mobile app. So do download that app. But let's pause as we thank God for his gift of life, which we have through Jesus Christ. And let's pray a prayer of blessing together. God, who through the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has given us the victory, give you joy and peace in your faith and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. In the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. We'll see you next Sunday. Or if you want to grab a tea or a coffee, we'll see you on Zoom. The meeting ID is on the screen now for a virtual catch up. Thanks for joining us. Again. Yeah.